Good Wednesday morning here on the Cross Border Interview Podcast. My name is Christopher Brown, your host, and we are back with another great episode. And I'm actually excited to sit down with this guest because I've driven through her community numerous times, and I'm excited to talk about her new role as the first president of the newly named Alberta Municipalities, formerly AUMA, Her Worship, the mayor for St. Albert, Kathy Heron. Kathy, thank you so much for doing this. Well, Chris, I'm excited to be your guests and be called the first president of Alberta municipalities. That's the first time I've heard that. <laughs> there you go. Um, I, I, let's, I start all my interviews off with the politicians the exact same way, and you're no exception. Kathy, where did your sense of duty to serve come from? My parents, I guess. That's a good question that you should have prepared me for. But no, okay. Uh, you know, my mom is a teacher. Um, taught in St. Albert for many years. And my dad, uh, you know, he he's a chemical engineer. So I, I actually joke sometimes that it's not surprising that I um, am passionate about many of the the, the sectors in, in that I am responsible for, whether it's recycling or some of these things, but to also do that in a way that is teaching, which is giving back to your community. I also would think it's a lot to do with um, growing up in St. Albert and my kids. Uh, I spent, I was so lucky that I got to spend quite a few years at home raising them. And through that, I was doing lots of volunteer work. I was a girl guide leader. I taught a course called Roots of Empathy. Um, and then those things kind of just transitioned into public service and it, council for a lot of the communities in Alberta is just a part-time job. And it, it is in St. Albert. So that was a good stepping stone. And uh, yeah, it's about making your community better. And either you do that by running for council or serving on the food bank board, one or the other, they're very similar. Now, just for my listeners and to my viewers, the uh, backstory of your elected politics is uh, first elected in 2009 as a councillor, re-elected once, and then you uh, made a run for the mayor's uh, chair in 2017. And then just recently in October, the last municipal election, you were re-elected. Now, your story doesn't end there, though, because your story ends with a month later, after literally probably even three, four weeks later, after the election, you decide to put your name forward for the newly formed Alberta municipalities or newly named, I should say, Alberta municipalities. Why did you put your name forward for that position? It's something I'm, I don't know, cursed or blessed with, but whenever I enter an organization, I want to um, rise to this place of leadership. And so, you know, council, mayor's the next step. I've been on the board of uh, AUMA um, for six years. Never ever in a million years would I have challenged our former president Barry Morishita for his chair because he was a fantastic president of AUMA and um, but when he decided to step into his new role as the leader of the Alberta party uh, the executive there's five of us that stood on the executive um, had a conversation about who should take over next and I think everyone took a step back and I was the one standing in the front but no I'm really I'm honestly really excited to to take on the role of president I think um, there's there's things we can do different things we can improve upon and, and uh, yeah I'm excited and we'll we'll be talking about a lot of that here but I, I want to ask the very first question the million dollar question What's with the name change? Why did we go from Alberta Urban Municipality Association to Alberta Municipalities? Because uh, I, I've tried to find it on your website. I know it's updating and rebranding, but from your perspective as the new president, as the first president, what's with the name change? So it had been 30 years since we'd had a really good look at our image and our brand. And uh, we had started to hear, this was, this was a few years in the making, we started to hear that um, a lot of our municipalities, a lot of our membership didn't really relate to either the word rural or urban. You know, we have towns and villages, you know, in the four corners of this province that would very much consider themselves rural, but they're part of our association. So we wanted to make it simpler and something that, that our membership could relate to. So we dropped the word urban. Uh, we also have um, a subsidiary company. So it was AUMA and AMSC. And AMSC stands for Alberta Municipal Services Corp. And it, it's our business side. We run a pension and um, insurance. And it really, the, the dividends off of that really fund the advocacy side of AUMA. But it's confusing to have those two separate names and their acronyms. Nobody knows 
what AMSE is. And even myself, I was probably elected counselor for a couple of years before I even knew what AUMA was. So we thought we'd um, get rid of acronyms. So we, we did a lot of re outreach to our membership. We had a survey and we had over 400 people respond to our survey. Um, and this is this was what we came up with is Alberta municipalities. It's quick, it's simple. We're, we're trying not to shorten it to AM. We're trying to actually say Alberta municipalities or AB munis. Uh, and hopefully um, our, and I think the membership has really uh, accepted it and they're quite excited about the future. So for those who are listening, and like you said, you you really didn't know what the acronym was for the first few uh, few years as a councillor. Um, we've had uh, then councillor Tanya Thorne, now Mayor Thorne. We've had Tanya Ruddick on the show. We've had uh, uh, Angela Duncan, the deputy mayor of Alberta, uh, Summer Alberta Beach. Alberta uh, Beach, yeah. Alberta Beach. Um, they've all said in their words what AUMA is. So I'm going to ask you as the new president, what is Alberta Municipalities? Well, we are an association that will continue to do the same work that AUMA did. So we will be an advocacy. We will represent um, all the summer villages, the towns, um, the villages, the mid-sized cities, and the two big cities. That's our job is to, is to try to work with the province when it comes to funding or policing or environmental issues. So we are a, very much an advocacy group. We are an association that represents communities. Uh, there, and then we also have the business side. So you can um, get your pension, you can get energy services from us. So it's now all wrapped into it. So that's not changing at all. You know, if you want to start talking about my vision for the future now in our HIV, we can start there. We, we Let's do that. So okay. what what is going to be different? So because yeah, rebranding always brings something new to the table. It's always, we want to do something bigger, bolder, further, faster, and uh, larger. So what is the big vision that Kathy Heron brings to the table as the new president of Alberta Municipalities? Well, I said it in my, in my little speech at the convention um, that I really want to work very closely with the Rural Municipalities Association, RMA. So that association is, is our sister organization and they represent um, municipal districts and counties across Alberta. And you know there is confusion, as I mentioned earlier, about rural and urban. Sometimes I combine into urban. Um, so I've already, you know, I've already talked to Paul McLaughlin, their president, and I, I think we're going to be much more successful if we work much closer in our advocacy to, to the province. Um, the province is very successful sometimes in a divide and conquer mentality when they have the two associations wanting different things and then they can choose whichever route they want. But if you have the entire, um, every, every municipality, whether it's a county or a district or a city or a town, um, speaking the same language to the provincial government, you're, we're gonna be much more successful. So I think that is my vision is to hopefully um, try to, align ourselves a little bit better and work a little bit closer. We've tried in the past and we're, I'm not saying we've failed in the past. We did at our um, association um, have a conversation about three, maybe four years ago to enter into conversations to merge with RMA. And RMA uh, is not really open to that idea. And that's not the intent of the name change. It's, there's no merger, there's no grand takeover attempts. But I do believe that we need to stop coming in as divided between Earl and Urban issue. Earl, Urban and Earl, I can't say it. This is gonna be good stuff for your issue. <laughs> urban and Rural There you issues. go. So <laughs> before we get into that entity of the RMA versus the Alberta municipalities and not versus, but the, the conflicting, like they want something and you want something, your organization is made up of a lot of different municipalities across this great province. And the issues down in Medicine Hat are not going to be the same up in High Level or Peace River or Fort McMurray or even down in Pitcher Creek. So how do you envision your role of bringing all those diverse voices to the table to sort of get everyone to approach the government and sort of uh, lobby the government in an appropriate way and in a more cohesive uh, one voice way I should say. Right. I mean you would be surprised. I think the issues across Alberta are very um, 
similar. I mean, the South sometimes has more issues with water. And, you know, recently we had Red Deer um, in Calgary and Wood Buffalo, you know, worried about, and Left Bridge was in there, worried about dispatch for ambulance. So yes, there is some, but that's actually the strength of our association and our tagline is actually strength in members. I have four big city councillors sitting on my board. They, they appoint two from Edmonton and two from Calgary. And they are, you know, especially Andrew Knack and Peter DeMong. I, I haven't really met, worked with the two new ones, but those two, they love talking about the same issue, or the issues that villages have. They, they love to be um, learning about how hard it is to raise money in a, in a summer village or a village. And they have to save up for years and years and years just to build, you know, three kilometers worth of road. Uh, and they, they truly actually uh, advocate on behalf of the smalls. So I think that's the strength in what we do is because we're different, and but we still are willing to work together and solve problems together. That gives us so much more power. Calgary, Edmonton, Vegreville, St. Albert, Drumheller, Medicine Hat, Fort McMurray, and Peace River. These are some of the communities this show has been heard in. By advertising with us, your advert will be heard by countless Albertans and Canadians. Visit the link in the show notes to advertise with us today. And I, I was looking on the Alberta Municipal website, which will be linked in the show notes for anyone who wants to go visit it. Um, you have other board members as well from people from uh, municipalities representing smaller communities like Brooks. I'm just saying that because I, mm -hmm. I know Barry's been on the show. So you, you do have smaller municipalities. Does that give the smaller municipalities the same so I don't want to say leverage, but the same footing as the larger cities, because as a someone from a uh, used to be from a small city, you always heard from councillors, well, the big cities are going to get the money. The small cities are always going to get forgotten. So when you have an organization like Alberta Municipalities, where you have people from all municipalities, not just people from Calgary and Edmonton on the board, does it give everyone the same footing? It does. We all have one. We all have one vote on our board. We generally don't take votes. It's about generally consensus um, structure. But as as you said, you spoke to Angela Duncan. She's a great example. So she's Alberta Beach, and and she was our interim president. How how powerful is that for a, a small village like that to have a councillor sitting as a as the president of of AUMA at the time? So it, there is definitely equal footing. There is there is always going to be an issue with Edmonton and Calgary getting a lot of the money, but at the same time, Edmonton and Calgary provided a lot of the services. So, so there's, there needs to be some understanding. So if you live, let's say in Gibbons and you have a problem with, you know, homelessness, generally those people end up in Edmonton and Edmonton is serving them on behalf of Alberta. So it, it's equal footing, I would say for sure. And, and the fact that we have that diverse board that shares the realities of what it is to be a summer village, and it's just as hard to be the city of Calgary. You know, so there's some realities that need to be understood. So you talked to me earlier about going on your tour across Alberta. Those realities need to be um, understood and heard more, I think. And our board is good at that. And I, I appreciate that because uh, I think there's a lot of people who feel, and this is just from my conversations with counselors in my short time doing the show and even outside during my time as a municipal employee, there are some councillors who feel like their voices aren't heard. And I, I, I often look at elections when it was the AUMA and I go, well, why didn't you step up and put your name forward? So I appreciate you talking about that. Um, I want to go back well, to that. You tell, you tell them to call me at any time. <laughs> there you go. Um, I want to talk about that RMA versus, not versus, but RMA and uh, Alberta municipalities. Um, with the name change like Alberta municipalities, you mentioned it earlier in the interview that you, you get the sense that it's everyone because when I, I don't look as at a county as a county, I look at it as a, a larger municipality or a municipal district as a larger municipality. Was there concern when that name came forward that you went, okay, maybe we shouldn't do this, but it is a good name. We don't want to step on the toes of RMA, but we want to make sure that we're a unified front and we go forward and that's the best way we can do it as this new name change. There's definitely conversations around the board table when we when we 
looked through all the data of all the surveys of our membership and what they wanted out of a new brand. And we came up with Alberta municipalities. There was, uh, yeah, you're, you're, you're right. There was concern of how RMA would react. Um, when RMA changed their name, so they were not RMA, they were AAMD and C, the Alberta Association of Municipal Districts and Counties. It was a hard one to say. And good for them, they rebranded. And they went to the Rural Municipalities Association. And the first thing that happened is we had towns and villages who live in remote areas of Alberta who consider themselves rural. They, you know, they were contacting our association saying, you're our association, but now they're now they're they think they they represent us and they don't. So you know, there was we took some issue with their name. Um, and and I'm sure there's they're seeing some. Um, issues with our name. But as I said earlier, I think it's about the, our realities and working together. And Paul McLaughlin, the president of RMA, and I have been great. We, we don't know each other that well, but you know, we talked last night on the phone. So um, we're going to have a lunch and we're going to try to figure out how to work together. And we're, I'm going to tell them there's no subversive attempt to take over your association. But where can we be stronger? And you know, the question came up at their convention the week after ours. And Minister MacGyver, who's our municipal affairs minister, that was his exact response. Is he said to the RMA membership, because you guys need to just work together. Like there's there's no problem. You will be much more successful if you come to government with the with the United Front. So I was it was I was glad to hear him say that. So what are the problems? What are the problems the organization Alberta Municipalities is facing? And I, 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 for those who are listening, uh, this is airing in 2022, but we are recording this at the end of December, so in the middle of December. So things might change between now and when it airs. But in 2022, what are the problems that you, the municipalities across this province are facing? I think we'll still be dealing with COVID. Um, that's been a, a you know an ongoing issue for the last 21 months, and our our, our issue generally is asking the province to um, not download the decision making onto the municipalities. So province wide mask mandates are better than Edmonton having a mask man ma mandate and St Albert not when we share a boundary. Like it's just confusing. So the, the province needs to step up with some of the health issues. Uh, I think for 100% sure, um, this proposed Alberta police, provincial policing is going to be a big conversation in 2022. We're already starting to plan webinars and we, we've, re we've read the report that the province commissioned from PricewaterhouseCoopers. We have a lot of follow-up questions that will hopefully get answered and then we'll form a position on whether we agree or not agree, keep the RCMP or go with Alberta policing. That will be a big part of our work um, for 22. Uh, I think the emergency management system is another big issue that we're dealing with. Um, so ambulance response times and dispatch. And those two topics, those probably the two that I just mentioned, RMA shares those as their big issues as well. Um, they, their convention had resolutions on the floor that were almost identical to Alberta municipalities resolutions. So there you go, 99% of the time we are aligned. Uh, there's going to be lots of work with the provincial government on their new funding formula, which is used to be called MSI, the Municipal Sustainability Initiative. Now it's called LGFF. We'll start in 2023. So we need to figure out how we're going to allocate that money and, and formulate that. And there is an example of where we might have a difference with RME because, you know, the the urbans are going to want more money than the rurals and we'll be fighting it's whenever we disagree it's generally about money isn't so, it always isn't it always? exactly um and I, one I, of the big yeah go sorry ahead. go ahead i was gonna say, I I was gonna say go, the, okay you go ahead i'm gonna <laughs> shut up right now <laughs> one of the big projects that we're working on is actually called the future of municipal government and we've got um the calgary school of public policy doing some white papers and just really talking about the future of, um, of our governance style, how we fund ourselves, looking at models across Canada. And, you know, we're gonna, I don't know, specialized municipalities is the right way to go, or if we do amalgamations or if we dissolve, it, there's, it's gonna be a, a big conversation. Uh, and um, it talks about everything from finance to governance. And that's, that's gonna be another big project for us. 
I, I'm glad I waited for you that statement because you literally just said a word that I want to pick up on, and that is amalgamation. Um, okay. Municipalities are struggling. I don't think this COVID COVID has really shone a light onto where people are struggling, uh, residents wise, but resident struggle means that finances struggle and municipalities are struggling financial wise because people aren't making money so they aren't, aren't able to pay their tax bills they aren't able to pay their so people are falling far and far behind how does does the alberta municipality organization just work with municipalities or does it look after everyone does it try to lend a hand to say okay how can we help our residents not just how can we help our municipalities but how can we help our residents and then i'll go into the organize the amalgamation question right after this i'm going to go straight to the amalgamation. okay let's go let's go okay. straight to the yeah. So okay. I've sat on viability, they call viability reviews. So the, some of the smaller communities in Alberta will, will recognize that they're, they're, they're not sustainable. And generally that has to do with their state of their infrastructure in their community. You know, if their roads are falling apart and the pipes under the ground are falling apart. So they have, we have a review process um, and uh, this is past tense because I don't want to, Alberta, AUMA would sit at the table and so would RMA. So the two would sit there because if, if a town or village dissolves, then they become part of a county. Yep. And that, that's expensive for an county. And so when, when I say you have to understand the realities of everybody who you're working with, we need to understand the realities of a county to all of a sudden, who generally just has gravel roads and um, now has to take care of a community that has paved roads and they have to learn how to plow them. and. And, and it's it's way more expensive. So it's that's a big problem for a lot of the uh, rural associations. But at the same time, I'll give you two examples, um, Wobman and Grand Cash. You literally uh, took the words out of my mouth there, your worship, because I was about to say Wobman. <laughs> okay, well, and Grand Cash was, it was a big community. That was probably one of the biggest that has dissolved. And they went through that process um, with the province and, and, and their county. And I think it was the right decision for them. And, and they, they always have a vote within their community. And I think the vote with both Wadman and Grand Cash was overwhelmingly in favor of dissolution and becoming part of the county. And, and their taxes structure will be different. Their services hopefully will remain the same. But those are two big examples of of residents as, as you had talked about wanting that change. So amalgamation is never easy because no. um, again, going back to my municipal days and I hate to keep on bringing that up, but um, there are always municipalities who want to either amalgamate with a county or an MD, but the MD doesn't want to, or the county doesn't want to because of taxes, right? Because they have a good tax base and then they'd be sharing it. Mm -hmm. Is that where we're heading? Because you're, you're talking about collaboration. You're talking about collaboration with the RMA. You're talking about collaboration between uh, municipalities and their district, their community, other uh, rural urban municipal districts. Are we heading to a more slimmed down municipal landscape in the future? Or, or do you think that we are uh, going to have the vast amount and the diverse amount of municipalities for years to come? My answer to that is, we'll probably slim down slightly, but, but the most important part of that is I would never want the province to, for, to enforce that upon us. And that has happened in Canada before. A provincial government has come in and said, that's it, we're going from 800 communities in this province to 500. Yeah. Figure out who you're joining up with, but this is, this is happening. I don't want to see that happen in Alberta. So to prevent that, we have we need to have conversations with our counties and, and our smaller villages and towns. Many of them don't want to dissolve because they feel they're going to lose their autonomy and their identity more, more than anything, their identity um, and because they become a hamlet. But then you you know New Sarepta was their own community and they dissolved into um, where are they Strath? No, they're Leduc County. Um, they're still New Sarepta. Wadman is still Wadman. Yeah. And then Sherwood Park is a hamlet. So, uh, and, you know, 
one of my best conversations was with the mayor of Strathcona County one time, Rod Frank, because he was he, their specialized municipality. And, you know, our Drawson has is a hamlet within that county, has a fantastic rec center. And Rod said to me, he goes, they would never in a million years be able to afford a rec center if they were their own little town or village. But because they're part of the bigger uh, whole, Strathcona helped them build a rec center. And so there are some huge advantages for the smaller um, communities to be part of a bigger entity. So, but my, I guess my ultimate um, message in that is I would rather that the municipalities in Alberta come to those conclusions on their own and not have it forced on by the province. I appreciate your honest answer on that. Um... We pride ourselves on going beyond that 15 second soundbite by becoming a backer of the show. With a quick visit to patreon.com and searching cross-border interviews, you can help continue this show. For as little as $3 a month, your support can ensure we grow and bring new and exciting things to our growing listenership. Click the link in the show notes and back the show today. I want to talk about 2022 here because I'm just cautious of time. Um, 2022, you talked about COVID. You talked about uh, uh, funding the new M M MSI funding, or mm -hmm. I, I forget the acronym because it, the government seems to love acronym, acronyms. Yes. It seems like local government fiscal framework, LGFF. There you go. Um, this uh, COVID-19 has changed the name of uh, finances across the board. Um, mm -hmm. what, what was expected is no longer expected and it's a whole new ball game. Do you believe that the, uh, the newly formed Alberta municipalities or the newly branded Alberta municipalities has a harder job now because of where we are going into the unknown of this new framework, this new COVID world, than it was going into the pandemic when we still had the funding, but it was still trying to figure out where we were in the financial world. Funding is always one of our biggest um, issues. And I think we're very much um, cognizant and understanding of the provincial government's predicament. They, they, were, they did help us quite a bit in 2021 with, with funding to help our operations. You know, St. Albert runs a transit and it was it was completely devastated. So they so we're cognizant of their position um, and we're willing to work with them. So as I talked about with LGFF, it's more about the allocation of the pool of money. So they've set aside a pool of money. Now it's about how we allocate that out. We're not asking. Well, we would always appreciate that pool to go up, um, and and that's that's still a conversation. We would like it to go up as revenues for the province go up. You know, so when as they as they rise. Our, our funding rises and if there's a recession and they struggle then ours would go down as well that we think that's fair yeah um so but yeah the fiscal realities are going to be um interesting we had a committee through auma that i chaired and it was our recovery task force great group of people with chamber of commerce um alberta economic development a lot of good recommendations because what's going to happen is the recovery of alberta is going to take place in cities and towns and villages it that's where it happens are you seeing so, it now are you seeing it now? Like, I hate to put you on the spot, but give me a glimmer of hope that there is a recovery happening right now because I see the construction that's happening in Southern Alberta right now. And that gives me hope that we are on a rebound. But from, from your mouth, do you see a glimmer of hope that we are in the recovery stages of this? You know, absolutely. I was in our board meeting today, the mayor of Airgy was talking about how how many housing starts they've had in energy. And he says, I don't know why, but people are coming and they're, they're, we're growing out of control. So, and I know St. Albert has had a lot of interest in industrial warehouse space. So, and, and then of course, right north of me is Sturgeon County. They have had so much investment and in, with the hydrogen economy. So yes, I do see it coming. And, and I think the provincial budget this spring will show that. So I think there is definitely a lot of hope for our economy. Um, I, I I'm always to... really positive though. <laughs> well, that's good. I, I like when people are positive because if you were a downer, I'd be very upset and I would be leaving this interview very bad. Um, I want to, I want to talk about the role of the Alberta municipalities with the provincial government for a second. And this is where we'll end off because I know you, you have other things to do and I just want to be cautious of the time. 
your your job now is to be dealing with the provincial government, uh, Minister McIver, the ministerial Minister of Municipal Affairs, potentially uh, Minister Taves of uh, Finance, possibly Premier Kenny. How is your working relationship being with them as mayor now transitioning into this role? Have you had conversations with them? Are you looking forward to building that relationship over your tenure as president? Yes, for sure. I think my, I always say actually that my success is about relationships. So I'm not one of those that will charge into a room and push into a minister's space. I, you know, I, I, I just, I'm friendly. I call them by their first names. So I've already met with Minister Sani. Uh, I mean, it's only been a month since I've been in this chair, and uh, so it's Christmas. Everyone's got their <laughs> exactly. Christmas play. <laughs> but I, that's that's my success, and that will be the continued success. I think is to have a, a good working relationship. And Min Minister MacGyver is such a down to earth, straight talker. He'll tell you as it is, and I I love that about him. So you know, someday he'll give me his phone number, and I'll just text him when I need him. <laughs> I'm sure that'll be fine. And I, I think um, there's no point in being um, adversarial with a, with the provincial government. True. And uh, in, in my term as president, we will be going through a provincial election. So that means maintaining uh, good relationships with both sides of the floor. Um, I, I, I want to. I want to. I want you to put your time time machine hat on and jump forward to the end of 2022. What would be a successful first year for the newly formed Alberta municipalities? Uh, so convention next year, and I, I gotta say, this was not my idea. This was Paul McLaughlin from RMA. He, okay. he, he said, why doesn't the president of Alberta municipalities speak at our convention and I'll speak at your convention? Right there would be a huge sign, right at the end of 2022 of a, of a two presidents and, and essentially two board of directors who are not suspicious of each other anymore, that we're working well together and that we're becoming unified as a voice for all communities and all residents to speak to the provincial government and the federal government too. So that, that to me would be a huge success, right? That's a simple one, but it would be representative of, of a bigger thing. And personally for yourself, what would you like to see your role as president of Alberta municipalities do to move the needle forward for the, your organization? Damn, you should have given me that one ahead of time. I'm Ooh, sorry. I just, I, I just swore for <laughs> oh, we had a we had a former minister crack some beers on the show when we were talking to him. So I'm pretty sure people have heard worse from politicians on the show. <laughs> Uh, for me, uh, it's going to be, I have big shoes to fill. Um, Barry Marshita was beyond the most compassionate um, president of, of anything. He was wonderful. And he's, I still speak like he's dead. He still is wonderful. But he somehow managed to travel to every municipality in Alberta over his four years as president. So in the end of 22, I think what I need to do um, is formulate a plan to somehow be able to reach out to all of Alberta in, in that engaging one-on-one uh, -on -one way, visit as many as I can. I'm the mayor of a much bigger city than Barry was. Yeah. And I also have part of a regional board, which takes up a lot of time. So I've, I've already told everyone in Alberta, I can't be the same president as Barry, but I do my success my personal goal will be to try to figure out a way to, to um, reach out and listen to those smaller towns and villages so I have a better understanding of their needs. And there will be some touring and there'll be some visiting, but maybe it's maybe it's little um, workshops that we all can, I get 10 communities together. I don't know what it looks like yet. That's going to be my in bed over the Christmas holidays trying to figure that one out, but that will be my personal success. Well, I want to thank you so much, Your Worship, for doing this, Kathy. It's been an honor and a pleasure. Yet again, I just want to make sure that you have uh, you have other things to do, so I don't want to keep you all day. But I want to thank you so much for sitting down and doing this chatting. Uh, I look forward to seeing what you have in store for Alberta municipalities. And like I said, when my tour starts in May, I will be calling you up in St. Albert to sit down and 
Uh, let's talk about the hidden gem that is St. Albert, and let's talk about some of the hidden treasures that your community has in store. And for any municipal, municipal leader listening, I will be reaching out to every single one of you. So <laughs> please get ready to see that email, Cross Border Interview Podcast, in your email uh, okay. list. I'll invite uh, you to come to the end of May. End of May would be perfect because we have our International Children's Festival in St. Albert. It's wonderful time to be here. Perfect. That's a date. Um, For everyone here at the Crossboard Interview Podcast, have yourself an excellent rest of your Wednesday. We will be back tomorrow morning, Thursday, with the former uh, finance minister of Saskatchewan, Andrew Thomas, is going to be on the show. So please tune into that. For everyone here at the Crossboard Interview Podcast, have yourself an excellent Wednesday and keep talking, guys. 